Hello and welcome to the new and official Partick Thistle Football Club podcast, bringing you closer to some of the central characters here at the Wire Stadium at Firhill. Today's first episode is in partnership with our host at the Podcast Rooms, situated on the second floor of the office space here at Firhill, and available for all your podcast, video, audio and production needs. During an initial six-episode run of the PTFC podcast, we'll share exclusive conversations with members of the Partick Thistle men's team as we build towards an exciting end to the season. And what better way to start than to speak today with a member of the Partick Thistle Hall of Fame, the fourth top scorer of all time for the men's team, and of course, your Partick Thistle manager, Chris Doolan. Welcome, Chris, and thanks for giving up your time today to have a chat about the club we all love. You're How welcome. are you doing today? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Good. I'm fine. Good, good. Um, it's apt, of course, to speak to you today, um, as we're exactly one year on, remarkably, from you being asked to take temporary charge of the men's first team, uh, a task you handled so well, you got the gig permanently and have not been able to escape. Um, a year in management, how do you reflect on that today and and summarise, for a want of a better word, the journey since? Um, yeah, I mean, I can't actually believe it's a year already. I think it's time flies, in football in general, it flies, you know, whether that's your playing career. Um, management career, it, it just seems to fly through. I think football is such a, a hectic schedule. You know, it, it, everything on a daily basis is quite hectic in terms of the workload, but um, it's the club I love. When I said that, you know, previously I was speaking about it, it's the club I love. So in, in terms of work, it, it's worth it. So um, for me, it's about doing the best I possibly can for the club that I love. Um, so it doesn't always feel like work that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and people often say, um, nothing prepared you for it. You would have known it was going to be full on, but is it even surprised you in terms of your expectations? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think you're right. I don't think anything does um, prepare you fully for it. You, 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 you know what to expect. You know, that the phone calls, the constant um, need for things to be done. Um, but I think until you're in that environment, until you're in that position, uh, you don't realise just, just how you know big the workload is. But like I said, to me, it's about I can handle that. Um, I'm willing to do it, uh, and I enjoy doing it because it's it's for for, th for Thistle, and um, anything that I can do to make the club better and improve, take us forward, uh, is well worth the the energy and the, the workload that that we put in. Um, but that's not just me, and and I appreciate that because we're a club, we're a team, um, and we work together. So as much as the workload is a, of a manager is is a lot. I appreciate the workload of everybody is a lot in a football club because it's not just the the 11 players or the the squad of players that you see on the pitch. There's a lot more to it than uh, than that. And every time the team wins, it's a win for the club. And it's it's not just the, the players, myself. There's more than that. So uh, we all work together on that front. Yeah, I'll come back to that theme of team um, because we know quite a lot about Crystal and the striker, of course. We know... Um, as we go along more and more about Chris Doolan, the manager, but want to just talk a little bit about Chris Doolan, the, the, the person. Um, you know, the team effort here at Furhill is mirrored by a t real team effort at home to allow you to commit to this fully. How important is that support you get from your wife, Claire, and the girls and the wider family? Yeah, it's, it's massive. And I think it's, it's one thing I've realised in management that you need behind you. Um, you, you have to have... And understanding as well. And, and I think it's one thing in, in my household is that we try and balance things off. We work as a team. Um, you know, we've got three children. I've got three young children. And trying to balance three young children along with managing the football club is probably the most difficult thing um, because I, I still have to be a dad. I still have to be a husband at home. So th there's expectation at, at home and there's also expectation at Firhill. So um, trying to balance that together. Um, and make sure that one doesn't overtake the other is is very very difficult. The the lucky part for me is my family support Thistle. <laughs> you know we we are all Thistle fans. We've all been immersed in the the football club for so long. Um, and as much as we've got three young kids, they've all they've known is Partick Thistle. So, and um, for myself and Claire, we, we're so used to coming here when I was playing, and Claire came to every game. The rest of my family came to every game. Claire's family. They follow us up and down the country. Um, but my children were introduced into that world as well. Yep. So coming in as manager, 
the kids sometimes don't even really appreciate the fact, you know, that, that what I do at the club. It's more about they want to see the players, they want to see Kingsley, they, they, you know, they're fans and um, they love the singing. So um, I spoke about that at one of the Meet the Manager nights about how, you know, Darcy felt, or highly sorry, thought I could start one of the songs at, at Ross <laughs> County. So it, it was that, you know, you're a dad. Yeah. But also they don't realise that there's a real important job there, but they're fans. And, and that's the part I love because um, they are understanding, but they're also part of this journey where um, we we are all immersed in it. Like I said, but um, you know, I have to give massive credit to Claire because this job does take you away at times. Um, it takes my, my my attention, my energy at times. I have to focus on what I'm doing, but like I say, I have to balance that with with still being a dad. Um, so Claire has to take massive um, respect for that because having to deal with kids at times, as we all know, is is tricky. Um, but we're all in it for the same thing, that, that we want to be a strong family and a strong football club. Yeah. And I, as much as I'm sure you, you jump at the opportunity, jump at the job, you, you do have to have that kind of discussion about there's implications here for the time I'm going to have. And, and, and that's something you, that is a consideration before you can commit. It is. I know, and, you know, for instance, as an example, we went on holiday in the summer and you know we, we only went away for a week simply because it's it's all you really get as as a player or a manager um and my time was spent on the phone sending messages receiving calls you know still trying to balance that by like i said being a dad um but at times it almost spoils the fact that you know you, you're on holiday with your children and with your your wife you want to be in holiday um but i think that's i realized really quickly that that can interfere um, so again, having to try and balance that, having to try and make sure one doesn't overtake the other is, is tricky. But like I said, when the family I have at home personally are very understanding and very helpful in that, and it's because we all want the best. Um, but as a family, we love coming to Firhill. We love coming to Partick Thistle. Um, so we want the best. Um, and I think that's important. For me, it was important, you know, before I took the job, Myself and Claire considered, you know, how does it impact your time with the, the kids? Um, and we made sure that that wouldn't overpower it, um, but it, we would work together. And I think I'm lucky, I'm, I'm thankful that, that I have that. Yep. I appreciate that's maybe not everybody's setup, but um, certainly for me personally, it's one thing that, that I can rely on at home is that, you know, we, we are strong, um, we are close, but we're also part of Thistle fans as well. And going back a year, I don't know if if, if the, the, the kids were at that first game at Somerset Park only six days after we, we played at Ibrox. Obviously, a lot going on that week. Not a lot of time for you to prepare. Um, first of all, how did you how did you manage that situation? And then we'll come to you know what just that feeling of representing this was the temporary manager at the time for the, the very first time. So how how was that transition from first getting the call to trying to actually prepare a team for game one? Yeah, I mean it was it was obviously frantic at the time. It, I don't think, I always had it in the back of my head that a manager could walk in here any day. You know, I'm literally tasked with being being in charge of preparing the team for the next game, which was at United. And I thought to myself, you know, as a player, you, you don't want too much turmoil. Players don't like turmoil. They like things to be settled and, you know, understand what's happening. So for me, quickly, to try and do the best for the club, I tried to settle things. I tried to settle people's feelings, their emotions. Um, calm things down uh, while still trying to prepare for, for a game technically, tactically, all that sort of stuff. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to try my best because it's this one. You know, if, and my affiliation here is to do the best. Like I did as a player, I gave my best in every game. I'll give my best every day. And uh, so for that point of view, it, it was frantic. But in my head, I tried to slow things down. I tried to think, you know, logically, how can I help? I've been tasked by, you know, A United in a few days' time. How can I help the team? How can I help the club? Um, so that was my sole focus. And then going back to the family, they kind of understood that as well. You know, Claire, like I said, we had that discussion where it was like, you know, you're kind of throwing it at the deep end here. Um, you kind of have to just man up and get on with it. Um, and you're trying to do the best for the football club. At the end of the day, we're trying to help the club. So, um, again, that back in at home helps because it, I know then you know I can go and give my all 
for the club for the short space of time that I was expecting to kind of be there. Um, and obviously it went well. So for then on, we obviously get results after results after results. And that's just football. And then, you know, we get offered the job. So um, I think initially, like I said, it, it was as much a shock as everybody. You know, we were all the same. But I had to try and help the football club. And the overriding th feeling was that I have to try and do the best for the club. So getting results is, is the best way to help that. Um, but yeah, and like I said, for then on, it's I can't believe it's been a year already, yeah. but it's been a very enjoyable year. Absolutely. What what that moment that you became the permanent manager? You've had a lot of proud moments in your playing career. What you know that is different, clearly. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it it was different. I think that's that's the kind of maybe the best way to explain it. As a player, when you you maybe set records or you you break records or you you know you achieve something as a player, there is a real feeling of pride and. and it, there should be because you know you've achieved something but to be offered the job in terms of leading the club you know you can lead as a player which you know I, I tried to do I tried to make sure I was that type of professional um, but to be then offered the, the job of leading the full club um, as manager is a big step you know and, and something that like I say I, I didn't see coming I, I hadn't planned at that stage to be anywhere near that um, but then I had to think am I the right person and that, that was the discussion, you know, me and Claire had, you know, I'm the right person at this time to improve Partick Thistle because if I'm not, I'd be the first person to say, I, I think, you know, looking at elsewhere is the, is the best thing to do. Um, but I felt as if, yeah, I'm, you know, and I back myself that um, I understand the club, I understand, you know, how we can improve, what we can improve. Uh, and I thought, you know, well, I'm going to back myself that, um, I can take the club somewhere. I can improve us. Um, but in that moment when I was offered the job, there is a real pride. And it's a different type of pride because, like I said, you, you achieve things as a player. There's a real personal pride. You know, you'll know, you see your name up there as, as a Hall of Famer or you'll see your name up there as a top goal scorer or whatever it may be that you've achieved. But to see yourself there as the manager is a different kettle of fish to me. And um, it's something that I'm immensely proud of. And like I said, that's why I try to balance both at home and the club to make sure that every day I come to work, I can give 110% for the club, knowing fine well that you know I can still go home and, and, and have a, a tight family like we have. But when I come to work, I come to work and I come to make us all better. Um, and that's the plan for us. Yeah, and it shouldn't be forgotten, you, you had a new secure job at the academy. Um, academy jobs tend to have a little bit more long-term security perhaps about them and then the, the, the fragile management game so there was that element of risk I suppose as well but as a player you're used to stepping over the white line and the brief relatively simple you know performing training all week and then perform the pitch help your team when you you know make that journey as a manager to the touchline you've got a thousand things to, <coughs> to, to consider really so what I'm getting to is the importance of someone next to you in the dugout who you can really trust and want to just talk a little bit about that relationship with with Paul McDonald even before you started as a management duo when did you first you know engage with Paul and what was that you know what built that relationship up to a point where you could then ask him to be your number two yeah I mean it, football just seems to be by chance at times Things just happen that, you know, that um, the stars align at times and you think, you know, I, I can't understand how that even is possible. I worked for Paul 20 years ago, 20, 20 years ago or so. I was at college doing, you know, coaching for Kilmarnock. Um, and then I ended up, Paul was in charge of that, the community programme. And we would go out to schools and we would go around about um, and doing wee football centres and stuff like that, you know. To make a few quid, you know, as as a, a part-time coach, as you do. But Paul was the boss at that. And then, obviously, you flip that, you know, 20 years later or so. And, you know, Paul's now assisting me. And it's just, it was a strange... I think we still laugh about it. We still have that camaraderie about it because I think you have to. I think you, you have to appreciate, like I said, sometimes in football, you couldn't write the script. Yep. You actually couldn't write the script. And even if you tried to second-guess it, there's no point. Um, but I think you have to have the relationship where, as you say, the trust is there, the understanding is there. So when myself and when I came back to the youth academy, when Paul asked me to come back and come in, 
it was a good fit because, you know, I was coming back to Thistle, which is a massive uh, tick in the box, obviously. But I was coming back to, to work under Paul. So it was sort of going back to all those years ago. Um, again, that relationship is still strong. It's still there. And then obviously what happens, happens, and we're kind of thrust into this environment. So at the, in that stage, you know, you want somebody by your side who can guide, can, can help, can you can lean on, but you also have an understanding of their personality, the, the type of person they are. Um, and I think that's that's the key for us is that, you know, Paul understands me as a person and, and the way I work best and the, the sort of mentality I have. Um, but he also knows how to push me uh, and how to make me think in a different way, how to challenge me with things. And that's what I want. I don't I don't want somebody who just agrees yep. with everything you say or, you know, just rolls on because it's it's the easy decision just to allow you to make um decisions. You want somebody to give you a wee bit of, you know, challenging. And it's not to be in a bad way, it's not to be um confrontational, but it's about being, you know, challenging and it's making you think in, like I said, in a different way. And I I wanted that, I need that. And um, I really appreciate Paul for that because he does it in the best with the best intentions as well. Like I said, he's he's there because he wants the best for us as well. He's obviously got an affiliation to Thistle through his playing career, through his coaching. Um, so I think that was the kind of perfect fit. And um, I'm, I was delighted that he, he took the, the jump because, again, we have to appreciate Paul was in a very secure job with the academy, very secure. Um, as you said, you know, any job in a, an academy is a secure job. But we both sort of took that that leap out of the security into what is an un, an unsecured job. Um, but we then both back ourselves to to do well as a team, as a, a coaching staff. We we back ourselves to to improve the club, and um, hopefully it's going well enough so far. Definitely. So you were literally a, teen, a late teenager when. You were coaching yeah. for Paul. We're really aging yep. him here. He's going to love us for that. But, um, what, what is there any insight you can give us as, as supporters to, you know, Paul's skill set on the training ground in terms of dealing with the, the first team squad as a whole? What, what, what else does he bring that maybe we don't see on a day to day basis? Yeah, I mean, I think Paul's obviously at an age where he's been through a lot. You know, he's seen a lot in terms of different styles of play different types of players, you know, types of personalities. He's worked under, you'd have to check with Paul, but I'm going to say something like 30 managers at times. That's right. Um, and in terms of even Paul stepping into those positions to help out, he's been there and done that. So for me to, to be able to lean on that type of experience is, is kind of invaluable at times. I appreciate that I'm a young manager. I'll make mistakes and I, and I put my hands up when I do make mistakes. I'm not the type of person who'll hide for any of that. Um, it's not the type of job that, that you hide for that. Um, and also, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go out there and blame people. I'm going to go out when it's when it's my fault, I'll take the, the rap for it. But Paul's like that. And I, and Paul's very upfront, he's very honest. And I think players appreciate that. And the players have such a close relationship with Paul personally because of his honesty. He will tell them what they need to be told, you know, if... if if they need certain bits of information, like I said, I think he's worked under so many different managers and picked up so many key skills along the way that he's very valuable in that. Um, and he passes that on through me or, or to me. Um, but I think in terms of behind the scenes, he does a lot of work, you know, like we all do. He's he's not in it just to coast through things. He, he's in it to, to help us improve. And like I said, I think you look back at Paul's playing career, he was obviously part of the club as a player. There's a real affiliation there as well. He wants the best, like I do, um, for Thistle. And the people and the staff all around the place, we want the best. So I think Paul's kind of biggest you know, attributes that he brings is, you know, he's a people person. He understands people. He understands personalities. You know, the ones he can get in about, the ones that he maybe has to tread carefully with to get the best and it's all about getting the best out of people yep. um, but to push them to a level where they want to improve and that's but that's my job as well is to try and push people to a level where every day they come in here they want to improve because I want that I want to come in every day to get better I want the coaches to get better I want people that work in the offices to feel like there's progression at Partick Thistle because probably I'm a, an example of that 
you know, I was thrust in to a, a position that I'm, I wasn't ready for, but you have to be ready to take it on. Um, and I want people at the club to feel like that. There's always a next step, somehow, somewhere. Yep. Football's got to, um, or, or has the ability to provide that uh, and make sure that we're ready for that. So, um, and I think Paul's of that mentality where he comes in every day to improve, regardless of how many managers, coaches, players he's been through. He wants to get better, and I think that that mentality is, is key for me. Great. Okay. Um, what in terms of you know you as a duo at the start, in particular yourself, did you have a kind of coaching and, and playing style you were you had in mind, and that, you know how much has that evolved? What you know what, what was Chris Dillon's vision for the playing uh, style on day one, and has that changed a year on? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you're probably seeing the the style that we play in, or that I wanted us to play in, and I think luckily enough, even though I was kind of thrust into it. I managed to get that style of play into the players as quickly as I could. And that was part of it. Not really until, I suppose, you get the job and it's yours. Initially, I'm trying to make sure we get results. For the first few games, it was about, you know, the opposition and who we're up against. How do I make sure that we get results? But after that, it was about quickly getting in a style of play that I know brings the best out in us. But I wanted us to make sure we got that in as quickly as we could to the players. I wanted to make sure that people understood what we expect from them. And I think we've done that. I think but players, it's a two-way thing. Players have to be accepting to that. They have to open up their brains to, you know, accepting information, but you have to give them the information as well. And uh, from my point of view, it was about doing it in a manner that is longer lasting than just, you know, a week or two, and then it fizzles back out to, you know, forgetting what we want. It's about putting down foundations that, that last longer than, in just a week or two, like I said, a game or two, and working game to game, it was more about you know a style of play that lasts a full season. Yeah. And like I said, I kind of feel as if we we are seeing that now, and um, that attacking style, um, and obviously we've always got to evolve. I think that's the key in football is that you have to evolve every year. Football evolves every year, and you have to evolve with it. If you don't, then you know you get left behind. Uh, and I'm more than aware of that, you know, you'll see in football, there's trends, you know, shapes change year to year, you'll see a lot of teams will adopt the same shape, probably a bit of other likes of Man City play, teams will start trying to copy that, but I think you have to be your own man, you have to be your own um, manager in there, what's the best for this team, what's the best for these players, um, and how do we get results, it's, like, it's about results, so, um, but for me, that was the the challenge was to get that style of play in which the vision that I could see. Um, but you also just have to look at the squad and we've got you know, academy players. We've got a lot of academy players who come through um, and I also want a longer term vision to be that that's, that's part of it. You know, we're a, we're a big believer that, that if these boys are good enough, they're old enough. Um, yes, we'll have games where we're very good and games where we're, they're not very good. But that's like any player. Uh, you could be 35 and have games that you're great and games that you're not. Just because you're 18 doesn't mean that you're any different. Um, but I want that pathway to be there as well. And like I said, that's not working week to week. That's working a longer term vision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, we'll just touch on last season and this season quickly. The, the remainder of last season, we debriefed that to death, to be honest. But so we won't go into specifics. But as a body of work, that remarkable playoff run. And the scenes in the stands and in the terraces, you know, as we really, you know, motored, um, it really kind of encapsulated everything this club is about and should be about. Um, you know, that you you'll you'll see that, and you, I guess the point would be, you know, those packed stands for the playoff games at home in particular. We don't want that to be the exception. We want to build that to be the norm at this football club. Yeah, of course. And again, I'm probably lucky that I've seen that over the years. I've played in that environment. We were in the the Premiership, but we made the top six. We've seen big crowds at, at Firhill. I, I know what it feels like to, to be involved in those games and look around and see that amount of fans out. And I wanted to bring that back, but fans will only turn up when we put something on the pitch that attracts them. And I was very aware of that, that we had to play in a way that encourages people to come back, you know, but also still gets results. Uh, results. So there, there is a balance there where 
you know, we have to strike that balance. And it's it's a challenge. It's a real challenge, you know, playing a certain way that, that gets bums on seats. Bring your academy players through that, that develops them and hopefully at some point makes the club money. Is And putting all that together whilst winning games and putting a challenge together it is, is really difficult. But like I said, it's, it's something that I was willing to meet head on. And, you know, we had a plan. I could see a vision for the club. Uh, and I think now I'm starting to see or we're starting to see that style of play. The fans turn up, as you say about the playoffs last year, the, the closeness between fans and what's on the pitch is was so tight. And that's what I wanted to try and encourage. I want to try and feed that because I know how powerful that can be. And when I think back to my playing days here and when we were in the top six and when we were in the premiership, we enjoyed that. We enjoyed that closeness. Um, that real community spirit was huge at Farhill. Um, and the the playoffs, you're right, they probably encapsulate all of that. And it's about keeping that and not just being it because it's the playoffs. I, I would love to look out next week whenever we're at home and see those fans back again and that closeness and that bond because it's also intimidating for other teams when they come to Farhill and they come to a big stadium with a noisy fan uh, base. And and I think, you know, that's what Partick Thistle's all about. We, we're about... Um, obviously winning, but we're about more than, than just week to week. We're a, we're a longer term thing. We want to be in the top division. We want to sustain things in the top division. We have to put foundations in place that allow us to get there. Um, and fans are a massive part of that. For me, like I said, I'll be back at the start. I, I support the club as much as anybody. I love the place to bits. And everybody that comes through the door uh, is part of that family. And, and is valued. And I think that's one thing I wanted to bring to the club and I still want to bring to the club every day is that everybody's valued. You know, it's not just Brian Graham, your top goal scorer that's valued or, you know, another player that's got potential who's valued. All that cuts the grass is valued. Everybody that works in the offices is valued because without them, we don't have a club. We don't have the, a great pitch to play on. We don't have, you know tidy stands to, to, for fans to be involved, uh, to sit in. So everybody at the football club has a, a role and it's important that we value that and make sure they feel uh, treasured in that. And because because we do that, you actually get more work out of people. People want to come to the club. They want to be involved. And that, that sort of willingness to help is exactly what we want. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, of course, fans have got a, a huge role to play. They've... They've backed the club brilliantly over the summer with the season ticket sales going rocketing and obviously the Jags Foundation with the regular five-figure donations. So, you know, the support is behind you is as much as you're, you know, driving that support. What, um, as we sit here now, the season so far, you had a bit of work to do in the summer, clearly, and the, uh, to do a, a bit of a, a rebuild, if you like, and, and more arrivals in January. But we're sitting here today in third place and we've got the league to focus on. It's, it is very much game on for this running. It is, it is, and, and I think that's, we, we wanted that, you know, at the start of the year, we all spoke about that, that's what we wanted, we want to be in this position and feel like coming into the second half of the season, we can really go somewhere, and um, we didn't want to be in a position that it was just petering out, that, you know, you're ticking off games. The summer was difficult, it was very difficult because, you know, you lose 11, 12 players I had to try and bring in to, to make a squad with less time, and obviously the, the financial situation is well documented, but I tried not to make any, I don't want to blame things like that because uh, we all have to work within our means. And again, I understand the club. I understand that we have to rectify things. Um, but I also want us to be in a position where we have that ambition all the time. And that's that's from me, it's from coaches, it's fans. We all have the same ambition to be in the top level. Um, how and when we get there, we'll enjoy it, you know, and and we will know that we've done it together. And I think that's important because, like I said about being valued, every every fan that comes through the door, every day that, that chips in a few quid along the way is valued because they're helping us improve. Um, and then it's up to us to give them something, like I said, on the pitch to want to bring them back. Um, and that's where we all chip in. That's where everybody's got a part to play. Everybody has a role, but... Um, longer term, like I said, we all have the same ambition. We all want the best for the club. Um, and, and I feel as if we're heading the right direction in this season. 
like say we're sitting third just now, we're coming into a lot of games where every game will be massive. Every game will have lots riding on it, but it's exciting. And I, and I wanted that for us. I didn't want the season to be a season that, you know, for now to end the season, you're just ticking off games until people go on their holidays. It's, or it's not. That was the message last year was, you know, I wasn't here just to be ticking off games. I, I was here to make a charge for things. Um, and that's the mentality is that, yes, there's been things thrown in our face over the summer and there's been struggles along the way. And, but so will every club. Every club will come up against issues. It's about how we overcome them, how long it takes us to overcome them, how we work together to overcome them. Um, and then, like I said, once we get to that destination, it's well worth it. Well, um, just talking about the squad um, in January, partly helped by obviously the, the Players Fund, with a big thank you to fans for that. You brought in Ross Stewart, Dan O'Reilly and, and Luke McBeth. Um, without putting you in the spot, but I sort of am, you know, you're always looking for players, but the loans market is still an option for you this month, so it might not be over yet, is it fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I before, if anybody makes us better and is available, then you obviously we would be looking to do something. Um, I, I think unless they make us better, that you don't, I don't want, we can't afford to just jump in and take a body who comes in and, you know, fills a jersey. We have to bring in people with the right skills, the right mindset. Um, January is a difficult time to, to do that. Um, I was very aware of that. But luckily, you know, Dan O'Reilly, guys like that, Luke um, and, and Ross are available. So um, it's not always that players are available. The ones in January, yes, but maybe not been playing. Dan had been playing week in, week out at, at Wraith, so Luke had been playing regularly. Um, so it, it's more about if they make us better and they can bring something to the team and the squad, then yes, of course. Um, but I, I was very aware of the fact that we had to try and do things quickly in the window to fix, you know, certain areas of the pitch and fix what we needed. The longer the window goes, sometimes that's trickier. Um, I was delighted with what we could do in the in the window, and again as a as a thanks from me from to fans and and the club and the board for for backing that because uh, they knew we had to do it, and um, I'm lucky that we've got such a good fan base out there, um, and and a board who who are going to help us. Then we can go out, we can bring in quality players to help us, and like I say, we can keep our eye on what's available between now and the end of this month for the loans market. And if anything's available, then you know we look to do it. Yeah. Um, penultimate question. Two more to go. Um, the last player I'll ask you about is one who's been here for a while now. It was your choice as captain just before the, the season started. That's Brian Graham. You'll respect his work as a, a fellow striker, of course, but his leadership qualities, clearly why you appointed him, are evident, not just on the pitch, but you know across the club, the training field, even in, and then around the, the stadium. Yeah, of course. And I think when you're you're choosing a captain, it's it's not just you choose the top goal scorer. It's not just that you choose, you know, your best player. It, it's more about what they can bring on and off the pitch for me. I don't I didn't want somebody who stands and shouts and berates and throws their arms about, you know, just for show that you're a captain. Brian leads by example. He he can throw his arms about and he can shout and point at people, but he'll do it in a manner that helps players. Um, he speaks to players off the pitch. He, he's a big figure around the, the dressing room. And I feel as if, you know, he obviously manages the ladies' team. Those those qualities are, are few and far between sometimes. Um, and, you know, for me, that that captain, it just happens to be your striker. It's not that it's um, all hand-picked because he's a striker. It's more about, it just happens to be that it's, it's Brian. But I think he does it well. And I think his leadership qualities are there for all to see. Um, and like I said, when, we've, when we're bringing through youth players or guys out in academy and we've got a number in the squad, you know, a lot of youthful players, you, you, you have to have figureheads at the club who can lead by example, who can show them how to live your life off the pitch, how to be a top professional, uh, how to deal with setbacks. You know, that there'll always be bumps along the road and, and everybody's career, whether that's as a player, as a manager, we make mistakes, we, we, how, how to be resilient. And I think, you know, Brian, for instance, can do that yep. um, weekly because he obviously, he, he looks after the ladies team. He's used to dealing with, you know, squads of players, but also with our young players and our seasoned professionals. 
he he puts an arm around people when when they need it. He berates them if they need it. So I feel as if there's a there's a balance there that you need. And um, like I say, I think he does a great job as as a captain in balancing that. Going back to you know myself at the start of the year about balancing home and you know behind the scenes there's a lot to balance for for players for Brian who's balancing the ladies team along with being the captain along with being uh, your top goal scorer and there's a lot there to to balance and I appreciate that he has to balance that because um, there's a bit of expectation on him being the captain but I think he does it very well and you know that's that's praise to him definitely I mean that number nine shirt's been well looked after this century by not just the two of you, but some some other great strikers as well. So all good. Um, so finally, with one year behind you and fifty games behind you, we're all set to kind of follow you and Paul and Brian into battle as we head into the, the next fourteen games uh, in the kind of orthodox league season. See where it takes us. What what would be your kind of closing message for supporters as as we head into that run? Um, I think, like I said before, we all want the same thing. Essentially, we all want to be. In the top division, um, and when and if we get there, it's it's because we've done it together. Um, and I, like I said, I feel as if we've put ourselves in the position and of third that you know this year could have been seen as a season. You know, there was a lot of transition over the summer, and yeah, that was the talk. And I suppose when you look at things all laid on the table, it probably was to be like that. Um, and we're, we're doing a lot better than maybe we set out at the start and what the expectations were. Um, but that's, as a club, we're doing that. That's Fans have helped in that. Players have helped in that. You know, recruitment, bringing it. So we've all had a part to play in that. And that's where I think there's a big pat in the back for the first half of the season. There should be a big pat in the back for everybody that's involved at the club. And then now it's about this next half of the season. It gives us so much to look forward to. And I think that's the key, you know, I, I said just previously you're talking about the the playoffs, that feeling in the playoffs. There's a reason why we go and hammer teams in the playoff and that you see the crowds and the enjoyment. We want to bring that every week. And if we don't wait until it's the playoffs and then we, we can bring that atmosphere, we can bring that atmosphere every week. And, you know, that's where that takes the players to give them something to cheer about, myself to give us something to cheer about. Fans will, will enjoy that. Um, you know, people that work at the club can enjoy that. So we all have that to look forward to. And I think the message from me is that we can ramp that up. You know, between now and end of the season, we as a squad, as a, a club, have a lot to look forward to, have a lot to be happy about and pleased about. And lots to, you know, the vision of the club and where we're heading. And, you know, even off the pitch, the, the foundations that are being put in place behind the scenes, there's a lot to be, um, you know, chuffed about I would say because um, longer term it's, it's heading in the right direction um, and like I say between now and the end of the season every game is is huge there'll be a lot of change in between now and the end of the season how the league looks you know where where teams are sitting we're the team that wants to be in the up all the time and you know we've got such a great backing in terms of fans and it's it is a bit of a weapon that we use and I certainly use because I speak to players a lot about that connection. We drive that connection. Fans want that connection as well. And um, I love to see it. I love to see fans appreciating players and players appreciating fans because we all appreciate each other and the hard work that it's taken to get to this stage from, from where we were um, and what we've had to go through in the summer to, to now has been immense amount of work. And um, like I said, yes, it could have been seen as transition this and you know it's it probably should have been and it should be but we're doing a lot better than that so um it's hard work from everybody fans are a massive part of that and from now to end of the season if we all stick together then we don't know what's possible absolutely hard work and togetherness and with after a bit of a odd break at for hill with not a league game for a while we've got a fair number coming up so a rallying call to the fans to get right behind yourself and the team thank you very much chris it's been an absolute pleasure as always, we will call that full time for episode one of the PTFC podcast. And thank you once again. Um, yes, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do share any feedback you've got. And we will see you back next week for episode two. Thanks again to Chris and see you next time on the Jags. <laughs>